Hey, what's up guys? Happy Hump Day. It's Wednesday, time for the new video for the week. Looking at the Week 9 recap for the Week 10 preview. Can't believe it's already Week 10, guys. we got four weeks left in the season. It's been crazy. It went by so fast. Seems like just two weeks ago we drafted. Um, but I'm really excited to get close to playoff time. It's when it really starts getting fun for everybody. Um, looking at the standings, guys, I mean, we're, there's some games, or there, you know, especially in the NFC, where, you know, every week, week in and week out, it's going to be another team at the one and two spot. Um, you know, every win from here on out is pretty much must win for every team that wants to get in the playoffs, with the exception of a couple teams. But, I mean, guys, you know, any, it's up for grabs. And there's no set one and two teams like there usually is by, you know, you know three weeks up in the season. A um, couple things I wanted to touch on before I jump into the uh, recap was number one, you know, first and foremost, sexiest picture I ever saw last week with the title belt and the trophy. Um, you know, for future reference, you know, I don't even care about the trophy. I want that title belt. I've seen where it's been. Um, but anyway, regardless, guys. Um, also, you know, commenting on uh, Nico's poll that he made. Guys, I really want everybody to comment on this. Um, vote on, you know, the poll. It's about next year's league. Uh, with the possibility, you know, we're definitely doing a keeper next year. Just letting everybody know that. I just want to get more details on the keeper. Um, but I really want to do one. Really excited about doing one. Um, and I think it'll be good. We got a fresh start for everybody. Um, let us know if you're going to be doing the league next year, next year, regardless of, you know, we, we're thinking about doing a little bit more money. We're still going to experiment with that. Um, you know, but in terms of keeper and rules, you know, if you've got something that you think is going to make the league better, Please post it, because I mean, it's a democracy. I don't run this league with an iron fist. I will look into your opinion, and if it makes the league better, I will definitely do it, guys. Um, definitely into, you know, making the league better, more fun for you guys. Um, if you want to, if you want to, um, you know, do a league-wide vote on trades, you know, put it out there. If enough people vote on it, I will definitely be open to letting the league vote on trades. You know, with a certain minimum number of votes and a certain percentage of votes obviously being majority rules on that um you know but i would do it so just a heads up if you guys you know don't be afraid to post something i'm definitely open to hearing about what you guys have to say um so jumping into week nine matchups had some real close ones guys and this is this is a big week a lot of teams playing each other had some playoff impl implications um implications i don't know check that um, regardless, guys, looking at this, um, you know, jumping in the first matchup here, we got Polish Pounders versus Ponders Pussy Pounders. Um, definitely a lot of pounding in this matchup, but I pulled out the victory, 111-83 to against Nico. Uh, he falls to 2-7. and seven. I'm now 4-5, and five, uh, knocking on the door. That's second spot in the NFC. My team's finally coming together here. Got Willis McGay, who's been having a great year so far. He dropped 28 for me last week, had 160 yards and two TDs. Pretty much was the weight of my team besides LaShawn McCoy and Tom Brady. Everybody else is pretty pedestrian, putting up, you know, 7, 9, 8, stuff like that. Um, but definitely got the, you know, 111 points, starting to finally put together some good weeks here. Uh, looking at Nico, you know, 83 points, pretty respectable. You got, a, you know, a couple studs there with his Drew Brees, Ray Rice, Darren Sproles continues to impress. You know, those guys had a combined, like, 57 points, um, you know, 47 points, excuse me. Um, you know, but regardless, that's, you know, that's great from your studs. Larry Fitzgerald with 10, um, you know, but 83 points, you know, Nico uh, falling at 2-7. and seven, But I really got to praise Nico on this guy, even though he's 2-7. and seven, uh, He's active. He checks it every day. He's still picking up players. He's still making trades, looking to better his team, really trying to, you know, maybe play spoiler for the other teams. Um, you know, but... I definitely love his activity. You know, he's definitely gonna be in the league next year. Um, even even though he uh, even though he had a tough year, he's gonna be in the league. I'm glad he's not gonna win the championship because I would be embarrassed to go in and order a name placard for the trophy that said Ponders Pussy Ponders. It was bad enough last year with Gearhart's gangbang, but um, regardless, <laughs> it, it's fun. I like the, his team name changes. So anyway, um, looking at that matchup. Um, Going on to the next one here, we got Autobot Revolution versus Kiss My Ash. Um, this was a big matchup. You know, both teams really fighting for playoff spots in the same division. Um, they are now also four and five and tied for third in the NFC with me. Guys, look at the look at the standings in the NFC. It's crazy close. Um, you know, so you know this was a big matchup for these teams. And Aaron came out with a victory, 88 to 71. Aaron Rodgers tore up San Diego for four touchdowns. He had 30 points. 
Matt Forte, Eric Decker each had 10 apiece. So it was a big win for Aaron. Or, uh, for Aaron. Um, hopping up to 4-5, and five, actually dropping to 4-5. and five. She had Phillip Rivers finally give her a good game of 25, but she made some questionable starts with DeLone Carter. He actually got her negative 2. It's hard to think negative 2 from someone in fantasy, but negative 2 it is. Um, Pierre Thomas had 14. Steve Breston had 11. Um, Jermichael Finley, you know, solid, consistent tight end. He had 10. You know, Packers defense had a pretty good game. Got 12 points. LT with 10. You know, we told her to start saying Steve, you know, against Tampa Bay, and she did, you know, San Diego still put up, you know, 38 points, but, you know, had she started maybe LT over Dolan Carter and Packers D, she would be looking at a W, but hindsight's always 2020, guys. Um, God damn. Tell ya, bitches be tripping. Uh, um, anyway, guys, next matchup. This was another big one for the NFC. Um, Team Badasses versus the Regulators. This was going to be our matchup of the week. You know, we got two high-scoring teams, both pushing for that first slot in the NFC, and now actually they both got a piece of the pie. Both are tied for first in the NFC with uh, two 5-4 and four records. Uh, Mike taking the victory, 118-75. to 75. Jabby really couldn't get it going in this one. Uh, Michael Vick got a 9. Fred Jackson with 9 as well. Deshaun Jackson actually put up a goose egg. So for your number one wide receiver to put up a goose egg, is you know, you're not going to win. Um... Chargers defense had zero as well, so two goose eggs, you're not going to win any games. Um, Antonio Gates still came through. He had 15. Wes Welker putting together a solid year. He had 14. Frank Gore with double digits. He had just 10. Um, hopping over to Mike's team, only two guys didn't score double digits, and when that happens, you usually do win. Um, Roethlisberger was 16. Um, Steven Jackson and Marshawn Lynch combined for 33 points. Victor Cruz had another solid nine. He had 90 yards in that game. He's a consistent target in New, uh, in New York, and Manning looks for him all the time. Miles Austin with five. Brandon Marshall and Rob Gronkowski combined for 32 points. Um, you know, big hit, though, for uh, Mike. Miles Austin out two to four weeks, again, with the hamstring. Um, you know, Jones Drew was on the bye, and McFadden was out, and Mike didn't skip a beat. He still scored 118, so... You know, look for Mike to, you know, if he can consistently put together weeks like this, he's going to get that number one seed in the NFC. Um, you know, McFadden's still questionable with that knee or the ankle. Um, you know, that's going to be big in terms of how Mike finishes is if McFadden can stay healthy. Um, you know, looking at Mike, he had, or uh, Jabby, he had a couple big scores on his on his bench with uh, Tim Tebow had 23, Mike Tobert had 19. Um, but still, it wasn't going to be enough to get Jabby to win in this one. So, like I said, both teams are 5-4, and four, tied for first in that NFC, so that division is going to be tight. Um, on to the next matchup, which was huge, guys. Real close. This is the second week in a row Brock has won by one point. I mean, talk about the luckiest guy you know. 96-95 um, victory for him. He had Calvin Johnson and Matt Stafford on the bye and still pulled out the victory. Um, his running back still couldn't put up anything as they combined for 17 total points. Brandon Jacobs had a big week, had 15. Mike Walsh with 10. Um, you know, and Tony Romo coming up huge with 20 points. I mean, that was really big for Brock winning this week, especially with Stafford out. Um, looking at Eric, he had Schaub and Foster going against Cleveland's defense. They only combined for 28 points. Schaub really disappointed with 8. Um, Beanie Wells, too, against St. Louis's defense. He only put up 3 um, that was a that was a killer for Eric. I mean, if if Beanie Wells could have did anything else, I mean, Bra or, uh, Eric would have won this easy. Um, even if he had started Michael Bush, which when I found out the news about um, McFadden, you know, sitting for the week and you know Bush starting against Denver, I was like, oh man, you know, Eric put him in. But with Eric's running back matchups, it's really hard to sit. Um, you know, Demarco Murray who had 17, but Beanie Wells, I mean, that would have been the ultimatum. But um, you know, Beanie was playing St. Louis, I would have started him too. Jennings and Antonio Brown combined for 10. David Akers had 16. Um, so, you know, looking ahead, you know, Brock's 9-0 and now, locked down first in the AFC. He's going to hold that down. Um, he's going to need more consistent running back play. Um, you know, just to, if he had more consistent running back play, guys, he, he isn't going to lose a playoff game. He will win the championship. But his running backs continue to sputter. Um, you know, look for him to maybe be challenged for a, a loss in the playoffs. Looking at Eric, um, his team is definitely good enough. He, they're third in the AFC. Um, he's right on John's heels. His team is good enough, and they score enough points. 
you know, to possibly get that second seed in the AFC. So, guys, that, that matchup's also fun is looking at that second seed in the AFC between uh, Jerry, or, um, excuse me, John and Eric. Um, so, like I said, guys, that one-point matchup, a lot of fun to watch there. Um, on to the last matchup of the week, which was another real close matchup, guys. Bolingbrook Blue Ballers versus uh, Titletown USA. John pulled out the victory, 110-106, to um, bringing John to 5-4, and four, dropping Jared to 3-6. and six. Uh, John got really good output from, you know, some studs and a surprise, um, you know, potential bust in the NFL. Reggie Bush put up 20 points, guys. That was his first big fantasy outing in a long time. Uh, Matt Ryan putting up 21. Turner and Mendenhall combining for 24. So, you know, pretty productive there. You know, he's got 110. Um, you know, Julio Jones on John's bench put up 28. He had two long touchdown catches. Um, you know, if Julio Jones gets hot, you know, John got to think about throwing him in there because Reggie Bush won't give you consistent fantasy points week in and week out. Um, you know, going over to Jared's team who almost pulled out the victory, he pretty much got production from two to three guys. Um, those being Vincent Jackson, who had three touchdowns, um, Eli Manning, who had 17, and Jordy Nelson, who had 16. Jordy Nelson continues to be a, you know an excellent option at the wide receiver position, uh, especially with Rodgers throwing the ball. Surprising stat, Jordy Nelson is actually ninth. Um, among points for wide receivers, which is pretty crazy. Um, he's got, you know, two, four, five touchdowns on the year, a couple hundred-yard games. So Jordy Nelson's a pretty surprising fantasy option for Jared. Um, and like I said, Jared fell to three and six. If he can string together some wins, you know, this team's not completely out of it, even though it would take John or Eric, you know, pretty much bombing out. Um, but, you know, like I said, every team still has a pretty legit shot. Um, looking at the – I've only got a couple minutes left. Talk my ass off. Um, looking at the Week 10 matchups, I'll kind of burn through them real quick. Um, you know, some big matchups this week, though, guys. Some, you know, interdivision rivals going at it, um, trying to get those spots for the playoffs. So looking at it right now, you got the Regulators sitting at 5-4 and four against Polish Pounders, 4-5, and five, fighting for that number one seed. Um, Jabby uh, projected at 121. Mark projected at 110. It's going to be close. Hopefully a shootout. See if I can't come out on top. Uh, got a fun match up here. You got Megatron's Army versus Kiss My Ash. Got a little uh, interrelationship rival. Um, you know, Brock's got some uh, difficult matchups. Um, you know, looking at this, um, you know, he, he, Ashley's got some good matchups, pretty favorable. She's got 116 and projected Brock's 98. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into who I think is going to win. I'll post comments when I got a little bit more time on the uh, on the individual matchups themselves. Um, Bolingbrook Blue Ballers playing Autobot Revolution. Both teams are really fighting for their respective second place spots in their division. Um, so, you know, John projected at 115, that Aaron's 104. So, going to be another close matchup, guys. Probably a shootout. A lot of high projections this week, so hopefully a lot of points scored. Um, Make It Wayne versus Ponders Pussy Pounders. Um, Nico projected at 98. Eric projected at a big whopping 127. So, guys, this could be another tight matchup. Um, you know, Eric really needs to push ahead for that second spot in the AFC. Um, and then Titletown USA versus Team Badasses. Mike looking to continue the dominance, scoring the points. He's projected at 102 to Jared's 108. So, guys, that could be another tight one, um, especially, like I said, I mean, continues to be a theme here is the tightness of the divisions. Um, so, while I got just a couple minutes left here, um, you know, get on, comment on the polls, comment on the matchups, have fun with it, guys. This is where I want the league activity to be at its peak is these last four weeks where matchups are going to be close. The standings are going to change, you know, every week with wins and losses for teams. Um, be active, you know, the trade deadline isn't completely over yet. So if you got to make that trade, like there was a big trade this week, um, so get on, vote, um, have fun with it. You know, good luck to all the teams this week. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post. Um, you know, like I said, comment on the matchups, guys. It's more fun when everybody's involved and, you know, we can get a kind of a perspective from everyone on who, think you're, who thinks, you know, who's going to win. Um, so, like I said, guys, you know, I've been real busy with work, so sorry I can't be, you know, on all the time and, you know, posting stuff every day. But, you know, big visit this week from the, the regional manager and all that stuff. So, John, you understand, you know, a lot of other people work retail, you get it. So, Anyway, good luck, guys. Have fun. Hopefully you guys are getting out there playing some Call of Duty. I'm about to jam right now for a little bit before I have to go back to work. Um, so 
have fun guys good luck this week and as always i will see you next week later guys